Hello everyone. If you clicked on this video, I'm going to assume that spaghetti falls from your pockets whenever you try to interact with people on After the Flash. Well, fear not, for I have created this guide to form reasons to interact with them. Before starting, I strongly advise checking out my previous videos on After the Flash, as they contain useful information about playing the game and will help you understand terms used in this video. With that out of the way, we may begin. Fuck! You're kidding! Judge, judge. Let me describe a scenario to you. You're sitting in Bargetown, waiting for roleplay to come to you. Sure, you may receive the occasional I bump into you interaction, but nothing genuine. Nothing worthy of calling fun. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? This is the current experience on Wintertide. You may experience this every day, and it somehow become the norm to you. If you're looking for a way out of the loop of despair, I suggest you look into becoming a Game Master. What is a Game Master, you may ask? Well, a Game Master is one who tells a story and typically creates one in a roleplay setting. In the context of After the Flash, you should be doing this by playing a character and explaining details to support your narrative. How can you tell these stories in a convenient format? An excellent option to do this is questing. Quests are stories you create and share with others. They can range from anything simple like sending a group to repossess an article of clothing, all the way up to complex scenarios such as rebuilding an AI from the ground up. The strongest way to manage a quest, in my opinion, is by acting as a game master. You should be there to play the roles of the characters, explain details such as what a player may find in a document or while searching through cabinets, and other actions they can't assume for themselves. When creating a quest outline, it's important that you keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things by creating a story that has more twists and turns than Brendan and his twin brother's backstory. Instead, create a story that is easy to understand, but is unique enough to be fresh and enjoyable for your party. If you need to, take inspiration from RPG missions from games such as Fallout, Elder Scrolls, or The Witcher. Just be sure to add your own qualities to them instead of ripping them straight from the games. Let's say your outline involves a feud between a loan shark and a shop owner, and your party is tasked with resolving it. Now that you have that established, add factors in there that make the story more compelling, such as a shop owner taking out a loan for the greater good of his family, or to invest in something for the betterment of his settlement. Simple additions like these can make your quest go from being generic to engaging and unique. Part of your story includes the characters you create to drive the narrative forward. These characters don't need to be super fleshed out, but you should make sure they at least have an outfit and a unique personality. Try giving them a catchphrase or a method of speech that is abnormal. Nobody wants to interact with the same uninteresting, monotone-sounding shopkeep they've seen a million times before. Don't be afraid to step out of the box. If your quest bends the lower rules for the sake of fun, then do it. The story you're creating will be between you and your audience, so most of the time, nobody will care. If some asshole with a mile time exceeding 20 minutes approaches you and complains, you can just ignore them. The moderators they whine to will most likely not care enough to moderate you over it anyway. Garu, meet Kiryu Moeka, aka Shining Finger. Hello there, my lovely lady. And just like that, a man's drop kicked back into the shady underworld of all night RPGs. There are a few things you should expect when guiding a story for multiple players. First of all, you should always expect the unexpected. Players may take routes that do not follow your initial vision of the quest, and that's okay. You should never punish someone for exploring unanticipated opportunities. Be quick to adapt, and if necessary, naturally rerail the quest. Secondly, know your audience. Know that not every quest will go smoothly depending on the people you choose. As a general rule of thumb to avoid Melvins, refrain from picking the I'd Viper type who managed to somehow look like a cross between a Warclan LARPer and an Academy E-Boy. Instead, opt for the guy sitting in the corner who looks like he has nothing to do. These types of people are commonplace in After the Flash, and will oftentimes get more enjoyment from a quest than others. As an individual, it may be difficult to handle a lot of people, which is why it's imperative you scale your audience properly. The sweet spot seems to be around 2-6 to six players to a party. Much of After the Flash's player base may refuse to do your quest without a sufficient reward, so you may have to give the Melvins incentive. If this were a more traditional role-playing game, I would say that the character growth and interactions is rewarding enough. However, you may want to throw in a couple of bucks or a cool item to lure them along for the ride. If you want some extra brownie points, you could give a reward that ties in with the quest itself, 
such as a trident and an underwater exploration quest, or you can make a more personalized reward, but those are typically reserved to campaigns where you can get to know their characters better. Alright everyone, thanks all for joining the campaign. I'm excited to run this long-form story that I've prepared for this D&D campaign. I'm Cumwagon the Fart Gotten, a tabaxi bard. Campaigns can cover a large variety of topics compared to a single one-off quest, and allow for more in-depth experiences. I strongly suggest you familiarize yourself with basic questing before exploring campaigns. With that out of the way, you might be asking, how does a campaign differ from a quest? Well, a campaign is a quest that typically spans the course of multiple roleplays and keeps a consistent story and party. When establishing your campaign, it's important you take notes on what you want to do. First, you should want your party to work together for longer than just a few minutes. You have to give them a reason to continue working together on each step. This can be difficult as all characters have different motives and goals, so your hook needs to be enticing to your audience. A boring hook that isn't too effective at gluing people to each other would be, you're thrown in prison. Add a little bit of spice and personalization. If your party is a group of humans, you could add, you're thrown into a prison run by robots who track down humans and imprison them. This hook sounds more personalized and could keep your party united as one for longer. Speaking of personalization, you should try to include the personal goals of your party members in the main story. It helps to collect information on characters before diving into a campaign, but if you prefer to run things completely naturally, then you could just jot down notes about characters along the way. This will ultimately make it easier for you to create a more personalized, long-term experience for everyone involved. If you notice someone is constantly mentioning a loved one they want to reconnect with, you could privately reach out to them and ask if they want that incorporated into the story. <laughs> Your quests may contain long journeys. These trips are the perfect spot to add hidden details that may come in handy later, encounters that may add a new factor to the story, or anything in between. For example, if your party is on their way to the quarry to investigate the disappearance of someone and happen to take a rest at the fitness center, they could find documents suggesting a hostile entity is present there, foreshadowing an upcoming fight. You could also have certain dialogue exchanges that open up new avenues, possible alternate endings, and more. The possibilities are endless, and the only limit is your imagination. But remember, don't overcomplicate things. You may also include details in your world that connect ideas. For example, you could have a set of characters that say the same phrase like, Would you kindly, to suggest they are somehow connected. Showing instead of telling is a principle of storytelling to keep your party guessing, and therefore, keeping them more invested with the story. If you're creating a narrative with a twist villain, like a doctor who comes off as good, but at the end reveals his desire to release a virus on the world thanks to your help, you should try to sprinkle in details suggesting he's evil, rather than just waiting until the end for the big reveal without any indication of it coming. You should bounce quest ideas off of your friends. Writing up a general outline and forwarding it to people can reveal a lot of flaws that you may not have seen yourself. The My Guy server contains a welcoming community where you can share your quests and get constructive feedback regarding it. It should also be mentioned that you should ask for constructive criticism from the people who complete your quests. From there, you can accept, apply, and ascend, making each quest better as you develop your skills as a game master. Freddy, please! Yes! Yes! <laughs> wow. Questing is an experience which can be fun even if you're not the best at writing stories. As long as you're putting in more effort into your stories than a big storm came by, then you're likely to deliver an enjoyable experience. People want fun roleplay, so don't be afraid to prioritize fun over all else. If you ever need feedback, you can always consult the My Guy Discord server for help on your quests or community advice in general. Who knows, maybe you'll finally make a few friends too.